All right, it's the after lunch crowd. Go Detroit Tigers! All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so honored to be here. This is an incredible honor. I'm a radiation physicist, and I work with cancer patients. And this afternoon, I'm going to tell you about some of the cutting-edge cancer research that's taking place right here in the city of Detroit. We're going to take a journey up a mountain. Let's call it Mount Cancer. The journey will begin with a video of a remarkable young man, Max Marget. I've had the pleasure of knowing Max. This video was produced at the University of Michigan where Max was treated. When he was three, his arms started shaking a little bit. There was no other signs. I just thought it might have been a pinched nerve or something. We did a uh, MRI that day. They found a large mass. It was as big as a grapefruit. If you just imagine a three-year-old kid have a tumor that takes up two-thirds of his head, that's how it was. And he did surgery the next morning. So within 12 hours of us finding out, they were in doing brain surgery. Now, after surgery, Max had an excellent response. However, unfortunately, a year before he graduated high school, the tumor returned. Max was treated with radiation therapy using a technique called steer-tactic radiosurgery. Now, with steer-tactic radiosurgery, we're delivering a very large dose of highly focused radiation to the tumor. This is unlike traditional surgery. There is no scalpel. Instead, we're using high-energy X-rays to kill the tumor. So you can think of it like an X-ray scalpel. Now, the goal of radiosurgery is to hit the target and minimize the collateral damage. That is, we're trying to reduce radiation damage to healthy brain cells. I'm so excited to tell you that earlier this year, Henry Ford Hospital, right here in Detroit, was the first in North America and the second in the world to install the newest, most cutting-edge radiation treatment machine for treating brain tumors. This machine is called the EDGE. And let's face it, Detroit is an appropriate location, <laughs> right? We built the Ford EDGE. And just as Ford is driving American innovation, we are advancing the treatment of brain tumors using a cutting-edge, pun intended, radiation treatment device. This is synergy, my friends. So what can we do with the EDGE? Here's an example of a patient with three brain tumors that we're treating. And you can see the beam rotating around the patient as the radiation is being delivered. This treatment is highly accurate. We can hit the tumor to within millimeters. And the treatment is delivered rapidly, within minutes. We can also image during treatment, and we can monitor the patient in real time to ensure that, indeed, we're hitting the target accurately. To put it simply, the EDGE is a really cool treatment machine. So I've shown you now that we can deliver accurate radiation using treatment devices like the EDGE. But how can we be certain that the dose we're delivering to the patient is indeed accurate? Well, this is traditionally done with measurements in generic phantoms like this. But these phantoms don't resemble individual patients. So how can we personalize these verification measurements? Well, what if we turn to the 3D printing technology to develop patient-specific phantoms? Well, we did that. I sent this CT scan to Mike and Eric at the Henry Ford Innovation Institute. They did some modeling, generated some cool images, and produced a 3D phantom of this tumor embedded within the lung. Now, if you look at this phantom, you'll see that it incorporates an incredible amount of detail. The 3D printing technology will change the paradigm for quality assurance of radiation measurements. All right, so we can deliver the accurate radiation. We can measure it in the future on personalized phantoms. How can we next intensify the effect of the radiation? Well, in order to do this, we need to look to the cell. And in case you didn't know, selfie was Oxford Dictionary's word of 2013. Now, we know that x-rays kill tumors by damaging DNA. But it turns out that a typical cell has the ability to repair some of this damage. But what if we added a gene to the mix, a gene that blocked the re proper repair of DNA damage? Well, in this case, much of the DNA damage would not repair. And over treatment, this, this damage would build up to kill the cell more effectively. 
So in this way, gene therapy intensifies the effect of radiation. Now at Henry Ford Hospital, we have treated over 100 cancer patients with gene and radiation therapies on clinical trials and have shown remarkable promise for patients with prostate cancers. All right, so we deliver the accurate radiation, we measure it, and we can now even intensify the effect. Can we now shine light on the effects of radiation on tumor and healthy cells? Well, it turns out in order to do this, we need to shine light on the problem. And in this example video, we're showing, shining a laser light on molecules, and these molecules will vibrate in different modes. By analyzing the scattered light, we can tell about the structure of this molecule or compound. This method is referred to as Raman spectroscopy. The Raman spectroscopy method can be applied to cells, and importantly, can, can be applied to DNA to understand the structure of DNA and how radiation damages DNA. Now, we've performed some experiments in which we've used breast cancer cells from mice. This was a collaboration of four institutions in the southeast Michigan area. And we've shown that the Raman method can indeed show effects of different levels of radiation. So in this picture, you're seeing four clusters of points. And each of these clusters of points corresponds to different dose levels, indicating that the Raman method can actually differentiate the different damage occurring at these doses. Our colleagues in neurosurgery have applied this to brain tumors and have shown distinct differences between healthy brain cells, shown in the black dots, cancer cells in the red dots, and necrotic or dead brain tissue in the blue dots. So where is this technology headed? Well, what if we were to develop Raman probes to help surgeons tell us whether cells are cancerous or not? You see, during surgery, the surgeons can see the solid tumor, but aren't able to tell whether cells at the boundaries are cancerous. The Raman probes may be able to provide this information in real time. So I've given you a sampling of some of the pioneering and innovative research taking place right here in the city of Detroit. I want to thank Max Merget, and I want to acknowledge my colleagues and collaborators. I'm so fortunate to be working with such a dedicated group of, group of individuals. I want to give a shout out to my chairman, Dr. Ben Mofsis. Ben empowers us to innovate and do better for our patients every day. Well, we've reached the top of the mountain. And, the, and although we can say that we haven't yet conquered cancer, I think we can clearly say, unequivocally, that technology and in innovation has changed the lives of our cancer patients. And if you have any doubt about this statement, perhaps Max's story will convince you otherwise. For you see, Max is now cancer-free, and he's a second-year college student at Grand Valley State University. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Max Morgett. Thank you for your attention.